CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. Welcome to FEQ Questions. Today we are very blessed to have His Grace Bishop Yusuf, Bishop of the Diocese of Southern United States. Thank you, Grace, for being with us today. Uh, our discussion today uh, will continue uh, last episode's question about chastity and purity. Uh, we have many more questions to answer with His Grace. Um, last time we talked about the body uh, and the spirit and our emotions. The body is only controlled by the heart and by our soul or our mind. Um, so the body is not a sinful body. The, if it is sinful, it is only because the heart and the mind. Your Grace will continue our discussion that we started last time about chastity and purity. Can uh, emotional attraction be converted into true love? As I explained uh, last time, uh, emotional attraction based on the feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but here actually, the mind and the spirit should approve this attraction. What do I mean should approve this attraction? Uh, the mind and the spirit should say, this person is a godly person. And this person can help me to grow spiritually. And uh, when the couple will marry together and live together, then actually this attraction uh, or this relationship will help both of them to grow in, in the knowledge and, and, and love of God. So in this situation, yes, emotional attraction, if it is approved and blessed by the mind and the spirit, can turn into true love. And here actually I can classify the decision uh, of choosing uh, a spouse into four types. First type, it's based only on emotions and the mind is completely absent. So I see big uh, defects and big weaknesses that can affect the spirituality and it affects the relationship. But because the person is totally blind by his emotion, that's why it will end very, very bad. And here the example is uh, uh, in the marriage of Simpson. When Simpson actually decided to marry, he was blinded by his emotions. And his parents tried to advise him. And, and they told him, uh, she is not from your faith. Uh, and also, uh, they will not have, uh, the family does have good morality or, or, or good uh, relationship with, 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 with God. Uh, and he did not listen to the advice. He was led only by his emotional attraction. The second type actually is uh, there is no emotional attraction and there is no uh, mind involved. For example, if somebody wants to get married to get the green card, uh, so here his mind is absent and his heart is absent. He just all, he, all his focus, just he wants to get uh, the green card. Or for somebody wants to marry a rich person to, to, to make more money or to have more money. So the mind can see major defect, but the person is blind. blind yeah. And also the heart, there is no emotions. So these are two bad types of, of, of marriage or choosing a spouse. Mm. If it is only based on emotion or if there is no mind. emotion or mind. The other two types are good. Of course the best, as you said, when it starts with the emotion, then the, the mind, mind and spirit approves it. So here the heart is connected 
but the mind and the spirit says yes. This actually goes with the economy of God, with the commandment of the Holy Scripture. But there is another type which doesn't start with the heart, but starts with the mind. I can see the person has potential to uh, help me in, in my spiritual life and also in, in life in general. That's what uh, the youth call it the traditional uh, marriage. You know, I see. Like, you know, our grandparents, when they get married, you know, at that time, there is no dating, there was no dating. But actually, they start to look for a person who is godly, from good family, mm -hmm. has good morality. So here, they are following the mind. And then, actually, it's processed from the mind to the heart. So eventually, they had both the mind and heart involved, you know. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say here, traditional marriage can also be a successful marriage because it's based on the mind and spirit and mm -hmm. later on it's processed from here to here. To the heart. So yes, emotional attraction can turn into true love if only the mind and spirit approve this emotional attraction based on the commandment of God and based on the morality and spirituality of the person. Um, actually, forgive me, Sayyidna, but my uh, question was intended. Can we change the first and second type of love into the third and fourth? Like, uh, for example, let's say somebody uh, is attracted to a girl because uh, she looks good or he just want to spend good time with her. And he just, um, he has no intention for marriage. He just doesn't want to think of his mind at all. But eventually, with his relationship with her, he tend to understand that she's a good girl, she is a spiritual girl, uh, can this kind of emotional attraction that he started with be converted into love? Here I want to actually to ask a very important question. What is the purpose of this emotional attraction here? Because if there is no intention to marriage, then actually the emotions has to be uh, under control and to be brittle. Otherwise, it can uh, deviate, deviate and, and, and drift from the right way. You know? So here actually, uh, again, I will go to the mind and spirit, should put this emotion under control and the person actually should set a very, very clear boundaries in, in, in the relationship mm -hmm. in order to, to protect it from being drifted away okay. uh, but if he, he if he start to, to feel attracted uh, in, in, in a physical way then actually he has to completely stay away yeah. uh, because uh, it can be a real threat to his spirituality and to his spirituality too now i would like to move to uh, actually a different point uh, what is really the difference between conscience and uh, God's voice? Uh, does one follow the other? Does conscience follow God's voice, our spirit, our Holy Spirit, or they're completely different? Conscience is like alarm that God installed in all of us, mm -hmm. whether we are Christian or non-Christian, to alarm us against what's wrong. Conscience is structured and influenced with the code of the family, the code of the society, the code of the school. For example, if uh, I grew up in a society that approves dating in young age or premarital relationship, then actually my conscience uh, will be affected by the by code of, of, of mm -hmm. the society. Mm -hmm. That's why it is very dangerous to rely only on the conscience in making my decisions and my uh, choices. Conscience has to be inspired and anointed by the Holy Spirit, but the voice of God. That's why uh, the Word of God and the Bible should be the main factor in building oh, and constructing our conscience. Here, when my conscience actually is structured 
and is built based on the word of God and the commandment of, of God, here the conscience will be the voice of God in my heart. Mm. But if the conscience is structured only by the society or the family or the school or the media, then actually the, here the conscience will not reflect the voice, the of, voice God of God in, in, in my heart. So the very important point here, conscience should be disciplined, structured, based on the word of God and the teaching of the church and the teaching of the early church. Okay, I would like to move to different points in practical uh, life. Uh, during the pre marital period, we, from teenage time all the way to marriage, uh, the experience of physical and emotional changes change uh, is very prevalent. They tend to seek the attraction of the other gender and they try to satisfy these needs uh, and they're many, with, in any, with many abnormal and acceptable activity. Will you share with us some of those examples? How do they, they react to those emotional changes? I believe that once a person starts to lose control over his emotions, he will try to satisfy these emotions in, 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 in different ways. Different ways. Uh, but what I'm trying to say here, the best thing in how to control my emotions and how to put my instinct under control. If you remember in the last episode, we spoke about, you know, how the person should put, you know, like horseman, horseback mm -hmm. rider, should put the horse under control, under control. Otherwise, it will destroy him. In the same way, we need to teach our children how to control their emotions, how to control their instinct while they are growing in the age of adolescence. But I think if, if they lose control, either they will suppress their feeling, which actually uh, can be very, very destructive to them because God gave us this feeling and emotion not to suppress it, but Trust. to uh, direct it in the right way and, and, and use it in the right way. Or maybe they can, uh, you know, uh, start get uh, addicted into like pornography or or bad habits. Uh, maybe they can actually get into some bad relationships uh, or, or wrong relationships. Uh, some youths can end up in like uh, daydreaming or or uh, falling in sin by their thought mm -hmm. uh, and and bad thoughts. Uh, so there are actually different types of uh, abnormal or wrong adaptation to uh, the growing feeling and the growing emotions. But yes, in Jesus Christ and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, youth can discipline their emotion and can direct their emotion in order actually to grow in the right way. Okay, uh, I would like to come up, uh, comment on some of your, the points that you mentioned. Now, if a person is trying to suppress his feelings, um, he's really working hard to suppress all those feelings, to avoid any trouble and just uh, keep, uh, keep peace. But it does have some destructive consequences before, even before marriage and also after marriage. Uh, how did that work? Because suppression like putting something uh, under pressure. So one time it will explode. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, emotions are energy. And if I put it under pressure, you know, uh, one time in a certain stage it will explode. Mm -hmm. And we, we saw youth who uh, went from far extreme to, a, the other to extreme. another extreme. Why? Because of suppression. That's why the church doesn't teach us how to suppress, suppress yeah. but how to sublimate, how to uh, direct our emotions in the right way. For example, I acknowledge my feeling. I know I have this feeling and these emotions, but I should wait until the right time and I can direct this energy in service, in, in, in sport, in, um, 
showing and expressing love, for example, to orphans, uh, needy, church activities. Uh, yes, I, I can use in, in any church activities. So here is a person who will grow healthy. Also, I can learn how to love everybody around me uh, and consider everybody around me like a brother and sister mm -hmm. and, and, and develop good relationship with them, good friendship with them, fellowship in Christ without actually focusing on one person mm -hmm. like in a dating relationship, but to deal with everybody around me as uh, my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ in a pure way and in a, in a godly way. So here I'm expressing this emotion, I'm not suppressing them, but I am re-channeling them in the right, the right way. direction. When I re-channel my emotions and express them in the right way, then I wait until the, the right time in order to choose uh, the spouse and to be in this one-to-one -one relationship. That's how I will protect myself from you know, exploding later on if just I suppressed myself. Okay, but um, of course redirecting our emotions um, toward other uh, uh, goal, uh, toward our um, activities and sports is, is very important and it's very uh, idealistic uh, way of doing it. However, person who is really filled with energy and uh, he's really seeking attraction from the other gender, is looking for input and care from others, not him caring for others. He wants others to care for him. That's why he tried to find people that loves him and willing to be able to t satisfy his own needs, to be, to be loved. You are absolutely right. That's why I said in fellowship, in dealing with others as my brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. actually I will express my love to all of them mm -hmm. and also I will feel loved and accepted by all of them there would be and this will, will feed will, will, um, will feed my need and nurture my need to, to be loved and accepted by others but here my 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 warning mm -hmm. not to focus on one person because focusing on one person in a young age can be uh, drifted uh, a source of, of drifting away that's why we need to teach our youth mm -hmm. how to have true fellowship in Christ, true relationship with others, in which actually I love the other and the other loves me I see. in a Christian atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So my need to be loved and to be accepted actually will be satisfied through this Christian fellowship with my uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have to direct our uh, physical, emotional changes during our teen, from teen age to uh, marital age into the right directions uh, by uh, getting involved in different activities uh, to seek and love others as well as they would love us. Uh, we should not be selfish but caring for others. Uh, and this way we will use our uh, physical and emotional uh, changes that we go through uh, in the right direction that God, for the glory of God. Uh, I thank you for being with us today and uh, hope to see you next time with more questions and more answers. Mm -hmm.